Hey guys, Jeremy here, talking about my Shadow of War experience with PAX 2017 West. Now, this is actually my 10th year of going. This is the shirt I got the first year I went, so I should probably change into my new 10 year anniversary shirt. Believe it or not, I actually have never gotten a shirt from the main PAX uh, shirt area since the first year I went. I never found something as interesting as insert coin. Now, this one is funny, like, because that's basically me. This is me. Like, I, this is a co-op game, but I'm winning. That is me, in a sense, totally with co-op. So, let's talk about Shadow of War. The demo was amazing. I actually had a pretty rare experience, according to the developers. So, there's different modes in which you got to play. I wanted to try Fortress Attack. I wanted to try that so bad. And what you had to do is you had to take four different locations, four different points, and then there was a central point, and then after it was an overlord. Supposedly, no one had finished it. The last two days I got there on Saturday no one had finished it yet so I was blazing through and then I got to the central point and at the central point one of the the developer who was watching me had another one come over and he's like he's already at the central point it's like yeah he's actually going through pretty quickly and then I got to the overlord and they're like oh wow he's at the overlord and I was kicking his ass it was a bit difficult I'll admit the one thing I will say about Shadow of War is that it's fucking hard the, I was trying to get a kill streak going, but I kept on getting hit by archers and everything. And my guys were dying. Their guys were dying. The idea of so many nemesis on the screen and in one battle at once was so intense. I got saved. I saved my guys. It got nuts. So I get to the Overlord and I'm kind of through the fight. And at one point, I hear the two devs behind me having a conversation. And the guy who I was with, he comes over, he leans over and he says, all right, technically your 20 minutes ended, but I'm going to let you keep going because I want to see how this ends. So I bring him down all the way to the point where I can take control. I don't want to. I want to kill him. thing I didn't know is that he had a berserker trait, which means that he can have half of his health back. At this point, a third developer is now behind me, and he's like, holy shit, why didn't he kill him? Man, he's like back to half health now. I had to beat him all the way down again, and I won. And I dominated him. I didn't try to kill him. I was like, you know what, fudge it. I just, I was just gonna want to get this over with. I don't want any more traits or something to pop up. So, after I beat him, the dev came over and he says, "You're the first person to do that all day, and yesterday. So far, he had known, he hadn't heard of anyone else beating it. So that was a really awesome experience. And then afterwards, I got my own kind of cool swag with these guys. So the first piece is something I own myself. This is actually the entire. This is the Shadow of Mordor game, but it's got signatures from every person who was part of the development team, both for Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. So I thought that was really cool. They were really nice about that. And I had a long conversation with them talking about the development of the game, what was going on with those a uh, with the delay, because it was supposed to come out on my birthday, but they said they really needed those six weeks to work out some bugs and whatnot. And then I said, you know, I love this game. I've been meaning to get some art for it, but because it's, I really enjoy this game, they're like, Hold on one second. Pulls out this. This was apparent. This is a sketch, a concept art of one of the characters you're going to come across in the game. She's like an Ent woman or whatever. She awakens when you create your own ring of power. And she's pissed off because you have awoken a Balrog. And she basically tells you to get shit done. Her character's name is Tira? Tira? I um, can't remember. But this is one of 500. If... Oh, I don't know if you can even see that right in the corner there. But that's one of 500. And they were giving these out at the at the um, the after, or was it the Friday night party, which now I really wish I'd been there for Friday night because I would have loved to have gone for this game. And there was also a panel which happened to be uh, moderated by Victor Lucas. There was a lot of guys there. There was a technical director, creative director, obviously uh, Troy Baker, Alistair, can't really say his last name, but he voices Celebrimbor. However, there was one question I was waiting for when it came to the Q&A, and it was about the microtransaction controversy. And I feel that the creative director basically handled it as best as he could without naming names, without going against WB Publishing, but he basically said as much as he could without saying it. Uh, okay, so I think the, the best thing I can say is the design director is all of our playtesting and balancing and Assuming that the, the players we give the game to do it don't have access to that, and so they're just playing the base game that you would buy for 60 bucks if you bought the normal copy. 
everything's balanced around that and, and, uh, and tuned for that experience. So that's the game that I've been focused on designing and balancing. So. All right. Now, I'm not happy about this whole microtransaction stuff, this loot box shit. I'm not happy about it. I could go in, on and on about it, but the thing is, so many other people have talked about it far better than I, one of them being Total Biscuit, especially with the recent, uh, with using the producer who had passed away as DLC. That's fucking trashy. However... I, again, uh, I'm not going to blame Monolith for this. They were put to do this by WB Interactive, for sure. Those guys are money-choking assholes. They went through all that controversy of basically paying off YouTube gamers to give positive reviews of Shadow of Mordor, even though they didn't need to because the game was already good. So, I, I don't know. They, they, I thought they couldn't get any worse with what they did in Shadow of Mordor, and now they're just like, hey, hold my beer. There were these two orcs, though. These guys as dressed as orcs who are at the con, and I'm gonna end off the video with this. Either way, I know that there's a lot of people going back and forth about what they're gonna do with Shadow of War. I know I'm gonna buy it because I wanna support Monolith, and I love this game. However, I'm not happy about the microtransaction shit. We're gonna see what happens, but you know what? Each to their own. It's the only game I know I'm buying this year, for sure. It is. I haven't bought anything else this year. Ghost Recon bored me, Andromeda was a failure, and For Honor, it didn't live up to what I wanted. So, anyways guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, here's this org video to end it off. Until then, see you guys next time. I worked my way to the brink. That being said, I am interested in what the perks might be in joining Talion in his quest. Are there benefits? Is there a pension? <laughs> if you can tell me there is dental, I'm there like oh. <laughs> <laughs> the dental is uh, but we do have daycare. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs>